We continue our parish reading of Evangelii Gaudium, The Joy of the Gospel, by Pope Francis. The whole is greater than the part. Article 234 An innate tension also exists between globalization and localization. We need to pay attention to the global so as to avoid narrowness and banality. We also need to look to the local which keeps our feet on the ground. Together, the two prevent us from falling into one of the two extremes. In the first, people get caught up in the abstract, globalized universe, falling into step behind everyone else, admiring the glitter of, the, of other people's world, gaping and applauding at all the right times. At the other extreme, they turn into a museum of local folklore, a world apart, doomed to doing the same things over and over, and incapable of being challenged by novelty or appreciating the beauty which God bestows beyond their borders. The whole is greater than the part, but it is also greater than the sum of its parts. There is no need, then, to be overly obsessed with limited and particular questions. We constantly have to broaden our horizons and see the greater good which will, be ben which will benefit us all. But this has to be done without evasion or uprooting. We need to sink our roots deeper into the fertile soil of his and soil and history of our native place, which is a gift of God. We can work on a small scale in our own neighborhood, but with a larger perspective. Nor do people who wholeheartedly in enter into the life of a community need to lose their individualism or hide their identity. Instead, they receive new impulses to personal growth. The global need not stifle, nor the particular proof barren. Here our model is not the sphere, which is no greater than its parts, where every point is equidistant from the center and there are no differences between them. Instead, it is a polyhedron which reflects the convergence of all its parts, each of which preserves its distinctiveness. Pastoral and political activity alike seek to gather in this polyhedron the best of each. There is a place for the poor and their culture their aspirations and their potential. Even people who can be considered dubious on account of their errors have something to offer which must not be overlooked. It is the convergence of peoples who, within the universal order, maintain their own individuality. It is the sum total of persons within a society which pursues the common good, which truly has a place for everyone. To Christians, this principle also evokes the totality or integrity of the Gospel, which the Church passes down to us and sends us, to forth, to, sends us forth to proclaim. Its fullness and richness embrace scholars and workers businessmen and artists, in a word, everyone. The genius of each people receives in its own way the entire gospel and embodies it in expression of prayer, fraternity, justice, struggle and celebration. The good news is the joy of the Father 
who desires that none of his little ones are lost. The joy of the good shepherd who finds the lost sheep and brings it back to the flock. The gospel is the leaven which causes the door to rise and the city on the hill whose light illumines all peoples. The gospel has an intrinsic principle of totality. It will always remain good news until it has been proclaimed to all people, until it has healed and strengthened every aspect of humanity, until it has brought all men and women together at the table of God's kingdom. The whole is greater than the part. Here ends our third